I welcome you yet again to another episode of Sin TV. Sin TV stands for Smart Intelligent News. And today's story is smart, it's intelligent, and trust me, it is definitely some interesting news. And what I'm talking about is the adult entertainment industry. Now, when most people think of adult entertainment, they think of the term porn, but there are some people in the industry, and see, for me, that was often the stereotype, was that I thought that, like, porn stars pretty much all acted the same, and it was derogatory, and and all of that, but then I had the chance of doing an interview with April Flores. For people who don't know who April Flores is, she's known as Fatty D, and she is a plus-size model and an adult entertainer. She does not call herself a porn star, and I often feel that the reason, the role, the reason why I feel that she doesn't call herself that is because of the derogatory connotation that often comes with that term sometimes. So I had the honor and the privilege to do an interview with Miss April Flores, also known as Fatty D. Check it out. Hi. <laughs> how are you, April? Good, how are you? I am excellent, girl. I have been waiting to talk to you for quite some time. Oh, yay. <laughs> yes, so you are you're quite the controversial woman. Really? Yeah, I read an article about you in Jezebel.com and it was talking all about American apparel and that whole scandal that went down. So let's start with that. Like, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, that happened a, a, quite a few years ago. Um, I don't know. I we had gone down there to uh, because we we had we want to do a clothing line and we had gone down there to um, look at some t-shirts just to test some of our our t-shirt designs and I noticed there wasn't a lot of choices for large size stuff so I just asked the showroom girl you know um, wear your large t-shirts and she just blew me off she was like that's not our demographic. And, you know, I just tweeted about it, and then it kind of, like, went from there. Um, uh, one of my friends did a blog post about it on her blog, and then it just it just kind of went from there. But I don't know. It it was a while ago. So <laughs> but, you know, I would just – I think that <coughs> clothing companies should recognize that there is a, definitely a market for, you know, more more size range – um, size ranges, but I think, I think they are, I think that was like in, in 2009 or 10. So it, it, it's been a while. You know, it's been a while, but you know, the funny thing is this, it's the same thing that goes on. And even one of the issues that I've noticed too, is even with plus size clothing brands, they're regulating their sizes. Like, like Torrid is a perfect example of that, where uh -huh. I remember Torrid used to be, you know, for the alternative plus size girl. And right. now they've kind of shifted into that American, like apparel type of aesthetic. So how do you keep yourself vivacious and, and keeping yourself trendy? Because you are very trendy. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just, I kind of shop at all different places. And instead of size, I just look at um, fabrics. Like I, I really like stretchy fabrics because, you know, that gives you <coughs> a lot more, um, fluctuation on what you can wear like some of my stuff is size medium some is like double xl it just depends on on how it how it's made in the fabric i just try to um get things that are flattering you know i think everyone should kind of learn what style and cut is flattering for their own body and then go with that yeah because i think that's that's the other issue too is that just because it's plus size that doesn't mean that it's going to fit my body or going to fit your body. So I I, I commend you because you're really pushing that envelope. Like oh, I saw, you. I saw some of your photos and I was like, yes, girl. Like, <laughs> please continue pushing this envelope because I am so tired of seeing those frumpty dumpties out there. I know. Thank you for saying that. That's very nice of you. I know it's like a lot of the plus size clothes is like, 
it's very like like boxy and not really like flattering right. and, and but it's hard because you know people gain weight all different areas like just because you're plus size doesn't mean like you have big boobs or you have a right. big butt or you, have, you know we're all different shapes so i think that is a challenge um you know for for the designers but there there definitely needs to be like sexier prettier trendier cuter stuff um, available as an option. And you know, too, with you, April, I, what I find fascinating is the terminology that you use to describe what you do as an adult performer. You say that you are an adult entertainer. So can you kind of explain how you came to that? Because when people think of adult entertainment, they just call it porn. And that's it. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I I rarely call myself a porn star, and I struggle with that term because just because I entered adult and porn in such a in my own way, and it was really slow. I didn't wake up and say, "Oh, I want to be like a porn star." You know, it didn't for me. It didn't happen that way. I started off doing, um, you know, modeling for photographers and painters, and and then slowly I grew more comfortable in front of the camera, and I I just got more comfortable with you know being naked and and then pushing it further pushing it further for myself as a as a woman um you know like then I would be like naked and then I would show like expose expose you know my hole down there and then I would like use a toy so it was really slow and gradual at my own pace so that's why for me I see it more as a form of self expression and um performance art that that's why I, I I choose I like <clears throat> I feel like I porn star doesn't really apply to me, um, so that's why I use like adult entertainer or erotic performer. Yeah, because like for me, like you know, I didn't like the terminology either. You know, especially now there was this. I got into this whole um, argument with this one girl on YouTube about the term BBW. Okay. And her explanation was that the term itself came from the porn industry. So, is that true? The term was coined in the 70s by this woman who founded this magazine um that showcased bigger bigger women. Um but for porn it's hard because BBW I I know it can be taken all different types of ways but for porn, um, it's a product, so they like to label things um, like a product, like you know, like a white white dress, or you know, you have behind your red red sombrero, you know, like stuff has to be kind of like categorized. So in that sense, I don't find offense to BBW, but I don't. Know, it's just it's just a term in in porn to describe that type of product, you know, like. MILF or or teen or what whatever it is that the movie's showcasing. I mean, ideally, we wouldn't need those type of labels to exist. But in adult, it's a product, so they do kind of need that the label. Now, how is a typical day for you? Because I mean, I, I like for me, I'm not in, of course, you know, your profession. But that has to be crazy. Like I've seen, you know, some of the videos that you've done and I'm like, wow, to really take all that, that really takes a strong woman to, you know, to have that kind of public, you know, sexuality in front of people that you don't know. So can you go through a typical day of how it's like for you? Uh, well, a typical day when I'm shooting, I'll get up early. I'll try to like do some stretching because I'll know like it's going to be a, a physical day. So I try to stretch, have a good breakfast, um, you know, shave. Uh, get, uh, all day leading up to the scene, I'm mentally like there because I'm super nervous and I don't know what to expect and I want to do a good job. So I have all this like anxiety and stress and all this building up. And then um, once like the cameras are on, the lights, once it's time to go, that's the perfect, that's the best part because then that's when I feel like, okay, let's let's do this, let's go, no more waiting, let's, let's fuck it, like, let's get it, <laughs> get it on. Um, and I'm an exhibitionist, so that turns me on. Like, in the room, it's not really a crowd, you know, it's usually between two and 
four or five people at the most in the room or in the, the location setting, whatever. But I get turned on by having people watch. So it, it's something that I, I enjoy. And when I'm there shooting, I'm not thinking about, I, I'm just thinking about connecting with my partner and making sure I do a, a good performance and a good job and that I have fun. And I hope that translates into the scene. Your husband, um, Carlos, which I found, you know, really interesting, you're um, in an interracial union and lately the adult industry has had some some issues with the whole interracial thing, even though that's, you know, been going on for uh, for quite some time. So in regards to your relationship, how do you keep that, you know, the adult or erotica life separate from you guys just actually being an everyday couple? Well, in our in our non adult world, we are non monogamous, so that's not ever an issue. It's like it plays; it's part of our sex life. You know, us being more open and fluid. Um, that's part of our our world, anyway. So that never poses a problem. Um, we just both our goal is um, for our projects to be good. That's the main thing we're thinking about, not like jealousy or cheating or any of that, because, well, like I said, we're already we've already established that it's okay for us to do that with communication and years and and, and talking and trust and loyalty. Um, but yeah, yeah, I commend you for that because I, I don't know for me if my you know my man came up to me and said, hey, you know I would have a non monogamous, I probably would slap him around a little bit. <laughs> You know what I mean? Cause it's kind. Of, I come that take. You know, I feel that's a real woman to be able to do that. You know, thank you. I, I think that you know our society is still trying to kind of learn how to deal. You know, or or learn what non monogamy is. And I think yeah. sometimes there's these misconceptions. You see, you know, sister wives. You see shows like that, and and often that kind of skews the uh, perception but I really commend you because I don't know if, if I could do it because for me it would be like I'm like oh well he's with this girl who has firmer breasts than me so <laughs> or, you well know. you know I thank you for that but it took it took a while because we didn't um we've been together for 13 years but we didn't uh really do anything with anyone else until like four years into our relationship and then it, it, it just our first experience you know with other people just it happened organically and 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 we just went with it and um the next day we like for three hours we had this like heart to heart like is this what we want to do and I was like I would rather this is in the beginning you know our our dialogue was like I would rather us do stuff together like because you know we're human we're animals right. And I, I think that for some people, monogamy is great. And for people like me, it, it, it's, I, I feel like we're monogamous in our, our minds and in our hearts. And the physical is just physical. Like I was explaining to someone the other day, like even if I go out and have sex with someone else, like I don't want to build a life with them. I don't want to have a future with them. I don't want to pay bills and have the, like everyday struggle with this other person. Like I have my partner. So I we just see it as an extension to like all of our things that we do for fun. You can pay my bills, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no I have no problem with that. But let's get a little bit deeper into your family life. You have a very interesting upbringing. You came from a very strict religious home. <laughs> and you call yourself a Mexidorian. Is that like a Pokemon or what? Descri <laughs> describe that. It's like, I, I just thought that was very unique. I was like, Mexidorian. I'm like, I'm going to call myself that. <laughs> <laughs> Mexidorian is just my term. I'm half Mexican, half Ecuadorian. Okay. So just growing up, I was like, you know, Mexidorian. A lot of people in LA are 100% are Mexican. Um, and, you know, I would have to tell people like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm this, you know, cause people, like I said earlier, we need labels to understand each other in the beginning. Um, but yeah, Mexican Dorian and my, my, my growing up life. Yeah. There, 
my parents were super strict. Like I couldn't go out to parties and I had to be at home. And, uh, yeah, it was, it wasn't bad at all. You know, my parents were very loving and nurturing and supportive, but I was just, you know, carefully watched. And how do they, do they know about what you do now? And how do they feel about that? Well, my dad passed away a long time ago and my mom, she, uh, she's aware and um, she is supportive in her own way. Okay, so she's, <laughs> pro she's probably so, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, she's she like I don't really tell her everything. I tell her like cool stuff, like if I win an award or if I'm gonna travel, I tell her stuff like that because I I don't want her to be completely oblivious to what's going on in my life. So I do keep her informed as to like good stuff. Um, I, you know, obviously I don't, I don't say, oh my God, I had sex today, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, but we just had a book event for our book, Fat Girl, which uh, is coming out. And she was there at the event. And so she's supportive in her own way. She always says that I'm an adult, so I can make my own decisions. And that's kind of where we leave it. <laughs> right, right. Which is, you know, that's the mutual respect is always important and you have the project fat girl which i love i was like it is finally time curves are in you know it's not the straight sizes anymore it's kind of reversing now so i love it i love yeah i love it myself so in regards to fat girl can you tell us a little bit more about that and if so where can we find it because i have to get a copy uh, okay <laughs> um well it's on amazon uh i think it's on pre-order on Amazon right now, so that's that's where you can buy that. Um, it, so it's a thirteen. It's a, it's an edit of twelve years of Carlos Bats shooting me, and um, it's a photo book. And with the title, uh, we just are trying to take away the negativity and the sometimes shame and the the you know not so positive connotations that fat the two words fat girl can have which I think is happening slowly either anyway you know I, I've seen a lot more girls embrace that term but with the book we really want to change the meaning of it and and have it be an empowering phrase instead of like a a, a hurtful phrase and the book encompasses like I said 12 years of our life lives and um, you know everything from like everyday shoots like dyeing my hair or more staged shoots where we have a background and, and full hair and makeup done and some images from the, the movies that we've done together. See for me I use it more of the acronym as like fierce and tempting. Oh you know, I like that. that. That's how I take it to be because like all the time people will use that term they're like well you're fat and it's like well, no, duh, I've lived with this, like, my whole, you know, my whole life. But I feel with you, you've turned it into something that's, you know, more positive and more inspiring. So, like, girls like me, I can look up to you and be like, you know, hey, it's okay. Like, she's okay. comfortable. Yeah, it's okay. It doesn't have to be, I mean, the also kind of like taking away the power of the word you know like fat so what yes like you said like oh do you think I don't know that I'm fat like I haven't grown up like this way like it, it doesn't it, it doesn't have to hurt that someone calls you that you know you could I like the fierce and tempting is that what yeah you're saying? fierce and tempting yeah <laughs> I like that I think I've watched too much RuPaul's Drag Race I think that's what it is <laughs> like I'm turning into like a drag queen like every day now so that's like uh, since I've been uh, watching that. And do you have any upcoming events? Because I, I know you're just all over the place. Yeah, well, we just had our big events um, on the 27th, so like three or four weeks ago. Uh, we're trying to do a book-related event in New York, hopefully, and in San Francisco is going to be September 29th. Um, 14th? September 14th. I don't know the dates. But in, in September, we're going to do San Francisco event. And I don't know about any others. Not at this time, I guess. And, of course, there's your website, too, fattyd.com. How did you get the nickname 
Because I thought it was a wrestling name. I was like, oh, she must be a pro wrestler, too. <laughs> uh, Fatty D, the D stands for delicious. And it's a term of endearment my husband used to call me before the website. Hmm. Before anything, before April even existed, he would call me Fatty Delicious or Fatty D. That was just like a, a nickname he had for me. So when we went to start my website, which was also before I had done any movie work or anything, I was just you know doing nude modeling. Uh, we were like, okay, let's do Fatty D. You know, we're just trying to figure out a, a website. And the name has stuck. And. Being, you know, a bigger girl and let's say, you know, I wanted to pursue this. Like, what is my, I would say maybe, what is the success? Because now BBW has blown up and especially in the, you know, in the, uh, the adult industry, I mean, everybody, you know, is doing it. So how do you, well, number one, separate yourself from the competition and what advice would you give? Because this is an industry where, you know, women and men as well, um, and everybody in between, they get taken advantage of. Well, I have to slightly disagree with that because um, in, in adult, you just have to kind of, I don't know, I'm a bad person to give advice just because I entered the, the industry so slow, you know, and so like just one project at a time and um, just taking advantage of opportunities that came my way. Um, I know that the genre is growing and um, I, I don't know, I, I, I can't really say do X, Z to, you know, ex like be different from the competition or whatever. Like me personally, I don't think about the competition. I don't, I don't really like think about anything other than my performance and trying to pick projects that I can be proud of. Um, that's something that I've done with my career. I've, I've said no to a lot of projects that I thought wouldn't be um, favorable, favorable to plus size women or women in general, like women as a whole. If I thought it was like a demeaning or degrading film title or, or the premise of the film, I wouldn't do it because I'm trying to, with my legacy and my work, I'm trying to keep stuff, do stuff that I can be proud of forever. Um, so I would just say, if you want to enter adults, do your research. Um, never do anything that you are not comfortable with. Never do anything on camera for the first time. You know, do it at home. Get good at it at home. Uh, and then do it on camera. Don't consume yourself with, thinking about other people because there's always going to be, there's always going to be competition, you know, and that's just kind of wastes your own energy where that you could be focusing on yourself. Arrive on time, have a good attitude, no fucking like attitude towards the director or the photographer or anybody else. Be positive, be nice, um, choose pro projects that you will be proud of. And I think I think if you have like a good demeanor and, and a good work ethic, you can you can go um, places. You know the industry has changed a lot since I entered. Um, a lot of companies are doing movies differently than they were when I started. So everything's different. Everyone's trying to adapt to the new uh, way that the industry is. So I would just say, and you know what? Nowadays, like you don't really need to go to these mainstream companies to get work. You know, you can cam or you can do clips. You can build your own uh, audience and your own body of work through yourself. You mentioned that you said that there were examples of different opportunities that had come up for you. And you said that they were not like positive towards um, plus size women. Can you give an example of that? Because I think there are a lot of you know, women out there who are interested in the industry and, you know, there's different names and different terminologies. I mean, I, I think everyone just has to choose that for themselves. Like, I, if, if a title was going to be like, I, you know, honestly, I don't remember the, the specific titles or anything, but I just remember like if they, if it was like a title that would be like, hypothetically, like fat dog whore or whatever, you know, like, right. if, if 
if you're not cool with it, then don't fucking do it. Even if you want to, even whatever, because you're going to have to live with it. Because even if you are okay with it in the moment, and I've seen this a lot of times, someone's okay with doing something, and the next week, month, half a year, five years later, they're not cool with it. So you have to really know that if you do something, it's going to exist out there. Um, and for me, my own thing is I, I want to have a positive body of work but that being said once I sign a release the producer or director can take my footage and put it in a film that I would not have participated in <clears throat> which has happened to me a few times you know I'll google just to check up and I'll see some like really crazy like un like demeaning title and I'm on the cover I'm like oh my god what is that <laughs> never signed up for this but that's a risk that you take when you sign a release you sign over all of the prop the copyright property whatever to someone else so that is just that's what can happen and what is this uh because i've seen it a lot in different films it's a uh, 2257 what exactly is that for people who are not familiar that's just the legal um I don't know if it's the code number or whatever, but it's it's the the legal paperwork that that states that you are over eighteen. That okay. Wh whoever's in the film, even if they're not having sex, if they're like over there in the corner standing and watching the pizza box or whatever, they are over eighteen. Okay. Yeah, because I've it's seen it. Yeah, I've seen it around, and I was like, I didn't know what that meant. But of course, you can. Plug yourself, let people know more about if they need to get in touch with you. And I mean, I'm keeping in touch with you. I think you're <laughs> fabulous. And you, Thank you. <laughs> you know, you, you have the looks. And there's some people that just have the looks and nothing's there. And then there's the people where it's like, I don't know about that face, but they're really <laughs> smart. You know, and you have both. So how can people keep in touch? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, well, my Twitter's a good way. My Twitter is fatty underscore D. And then my website is fattyd.com, F-A-T-T-Y-D. And my tw my Facebook, I don't know. It, I have a, a fan page, and I'm not. I think it's April dot Flores. I'm not sure, <laughs> <laughs> but on my website, I have links to all that stuff. Okay, so I'm I'm definitely gonna add you on Twitter and and keep up with you. And I know you have another book that's in the works. I believe it's called Vulgar. Oh, Vulgar's the film. Oh, that's so the that's, film. That's a film that, um, you know, because I work a lot with my husband. He directs, and he's directed a lot of the films that I've been in. And um, so Vulgar's the next one. We've shot two scenes so far, and it, I think it's going to be a really cool film. Like, we shot, <coughs> excuse me, we shot a scene two weeks ago, and it was just really, like, crazy. So with the, the title Vulgar, we're just trying, we're just kind of, making not really making fun of the the word but just like in in mainstream media the things that they can cons consider vulgar is like not even vulgar like that like a, a girl with a tight dress that has you know like cutouts i'd be like that's right. vulgar like vulgar is different things to different people so it's just a just cool title yeah um and i'm really excited when that you know comes out so i'm like i'm gonna have to check that out thank you so much april Thank for you. being on the show and I definitely have to have you come back again because I feel yeah. that you have a very unique perspective on things that I think a lot of women no, don't really realize. I think we're very quick to judge people that are in you know erotica or do different s sorts of adult entertainment and you are an everyday person just like anybody else. <laughs> thank you so much for talking to me and um let me know when this is up and i can uh spread the word about it oh yeah definitely i i will let you know so and i can like tell all my friends and <laughs> have bragging rights i'm like i talked to my girl april me and her like this like <laughs> we're like this yeah. we're uh fabulous and tempting Sick. Yeah, like you can do, I use either fabulous and tempting or i use fabulous and thick because that's the one monique used okay yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. But tempting is good. Yeah, because we are very tempting. That's why guys are always trying to, you know, holler at us and cause car accidents. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I will talk to you soon, April. Take okay. care of yourself.
Thank and you, you get too. better because you sound and you cough in. I know. I, I got sick like a, a month ago and the doctor's like, you're going to have this cough for three weeks and it has been. So. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> tea always works. So make sure you do that. Oh, that's good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, April. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I would like to thank, once again, Miss April Froez for being on the show. You can check out her Twitter at Fatty D. So it's capital F-A-T-T-Y, then underscore capital D. And she also has an awesome personal website, which is at FattyD.com. When I did this interview with April Flores, it completely changed my perceptive and completely changed my mind about... The adult entertainment industry. I mean, these people are people just like us. It's just that they choose to do something that tends to be a little bit more forefront sexually in nature. At the end of the day, people are people and we can't discriminate and continue to hate on people who are in this industry because I think that although there is some things that need to change in the industry. I think now with more women owning adult entertainment companies, it's becoming more positive and through that positivity will come the change. So what did you think about the interview? Please let me know. You can follow me on Twitter. I have over a hundred uh, well, over 500 followers now and I am so grateful and blessed for each and every one of you that tune in and watch this video every week. So please follow me on Twitter which is Sin TV Now. So at Sin TV Now. I'll have the links below and remember to get smart and stay informed. Thank you so much for watching.